G'day guys, come down the river after dinner tonight because I'm going to try and chase some Murray Cod using bait. Now I'm allowed to have two rods in the water at once. Uh, I'm going to try and get them on cheese. I've brought some little tasty cheese cubes. But I've also brought the shrimp net and some dry cat food. So I might catch some shrimp and throw one of them on the hook a bit later as well. And I'll probably stay here till dark, which is the time of day when they're most active in the summer. So let's see how I go. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is throw in a shrimp net. I've brought along my little collapsible bait trap, or shrimp net as they're called. I'm going to throw that in near the snags over there and hope that there's some um, little freshwater shrimp hanging around near those. And get some of them to use as bait a bit later. But I'm going to start the day with the little tasty cheese cubes. So I'll go throw the net in now. I'm going to throw that out just next to the log under the water over here. Still a fair bit of current, but it goes down below the level at which I can still see it. So that should be deep enough and dark enough for shrimp. Alright, so I've got the shrimp net in, in the snags over there behind me. And I'll be baiting up my two rods. Oh, just don't mind me while I just fall over walking up the bank. But I'll be baiting up my two rods with tasty cheese cubes. So for this I've set up a pattern oster rig. So I've made a loop with a double half hitch knot there, which goes to a decent size hook, which goes down to a few sinkers. Now the reason I'm using a few sinkers is because I want that bait to be held up off the bottom when the line's pulled tight, and I don't have any heavy sinkers left. And I'm going to throw it over there where them roots are overhanging, because I think it's fairly deep there, based on the lures I've flicked here in the past. And I reckon that would just be a good spot, out of the current a little bit. I'll bait up the second rod and I reckon I'll put it over near those tree roots in the shade there, because I reckon that's prime territory there. That's pretty good I reckon. So I've got the one rod set up here, out in front of the tree roots. The other rod set up here, out in that bit of shade coming across there. I don't know how I'll go. I haven't fished here with bait for Murray Cod before. I've had plenty of buffs on surface lures but no hookups. And just over there near the reeds is where I hooked that yellow belly off the top recently. So um, who knows, I know there's fish here. But it's about casting in the right spot I guess when you're going for Murray Cod. So we'll see how I go. That was a good bite on the cheese. I hope he comes back. He might have taken the cheese though. It's a decent bite. I'm in the right spot. I reckon he's taken the cheese off the hook and kept swimming. I'll give it another couple of minutes. And if there's still no action on the rod, I'll reel it in and check the bait. Got it. Lovely little muzzer. Beautiful. I've only been here 10 minutes. I've already caught a little Murray Cod. I was going to use the landing net, but he's only little. I think I'll just thumb this one. Oh, you bloody ripper. Just wet my hands. There we go, guys. I've been here a whole 10 minutes and I've already caught a little Murray Cod. Put him at about 25 centimetres. I won't keep him out of the water too long. I'll just get him back. But what a bloody ripper. Can't believe that. 10 minutes and I'm already onto a Murray Cod. I'll get him back. Alright mate, off you go. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely stoked. The cheese has paid dividends already. And he did take it off, so hopefully it's still in his belly and he got a feed at the same time. And I'll get another cube on and keep fishing.
wrapped with that. I'm not convinced on the placement of this bait. I reckon that's really shallow over there. But I'll leave it for now. I may end up moving it over here closer to the other one. But then I suppose it can't hurt to spread out. Even if it is shadow, uh, even if it is shallow over there, the shade is coming across now as the sun sets and they do explore shallower waters in the low light periods. Look, I'll just leave it there for now. If it sees no action, I might move it, but I'll think about that when the time comes. All right, so I've probably been here 20 minutes now. I was here for 10 minutes before I caught that little Murray cod. It's been about another 10 minutes since then. And I'm just curious if my nets, oh, there's that slippery spot again. That's twice I've nearly fallen over there. Um, yeah, I'm curious if my net's in a good spot to catch some shrimp for me. So I'm going to pull it up and check it. See if we've got any shrimp inside. Oh, I can hear it. Oh, there was one on the outside. He got away. Oh, look at that, guys. A few in there. Four, I think. I'm actually not going to open the zipper because it's a bit busted. I don't know if you can see that, but I had a lot of trouble getting it closed. So I'm just going to leave it closed for now. I've caught one cod on cheese already, but I know that's in the right spot to catch some shrimp for me. So I'm just going to throw it back out where it was. All right, I think the time's come. I don't think that bait rod's in the right spot. And I usually like to trust my gut when I get these feelings. And I've given it that extra 10, 15 minutes in this spot. It hasn't had a nibble, so I will be moving it. It'll be interesting to see if my cheese is still on the hook. Well, it wasn't deep there at all. Not even a little bit. So, uh, let me see what it's like over this side maybe I'll go out here just past the end of that but still in that area halfway to three quarters of the way across is where I'll be aiming for I'm just gonna throw give this straight out there oh that's much deeper much deeper so that's in a better spot already. Based on where that landed and where it's ended up, that is in a much deeper spot. Now, how you can gauge the depth of where your bait just landed is by where the ripples are going out and how far in your line comes from where those ripples are or where your bait hit the water. So just then my bait hit the water about three quarters of the way across the river or two thirds to three quarters of the way. It's now sitting back here about one third of the way across the river. That lets me know that the bait sunk down quite a substantial amount. That line's on a fair angle. These are all good indications that that's a nice deep hole right there. And that's a good spot to try and find a Murray Cod. Something near the shallows there. Probably a carp coming up that close. Let's have another check of the shrimp net. Whoa, there is plenty in there. Let's say eight to ten. All right, I've doubled the amount of shrimp I had. Get it out next to that log again. And let it sit there. I don't know if I'll actually use shrimp as bait today and they're hard to keep alive if I take them home so the odds are I'll probably release whatever shrimp I catch in that net anyway but um, yeah it's good to test the waters and see that there is bait here if I want to bring the net down next time well probably not that net I'll bring a net that's got a non busted zipper <laughs> alright I might pull up this rod and do a bait check see if my cheese is still sitting on there because been a good half an hour since I threw it back in and I know cheese is prone to come off the hook sometimes so I'm keen to see if it's still on there it is that's good let's check its structural integrity oh look at all the things that have been biting on that look at it it's 
been eaten. Look at all the little claw or teeth marks there. Check its structural integrity. Doesn't feel like it's going to come off the hook, so I'll just cast that same bit out again. But yeah, something's definitely been having a munch on that. Little shrimp, I would say. Right there in front of them were tree roots. Well, after I caught that first little Murray, is a bite. I was just trying to tell the camera that uh, after catching that first Murray cod in the first 10 minutes, I haven't had a nibble in about an hour, and as I was trying to say it, this rod started having little nibbles, so... Hopefully it's picking up. I am entering the magic hour, that's the last hour of sunlight before it gets completely dark. And that's when the Murray cod usually come out from under their logs and like to play and look for food, so... With a bit of luck I'll get some more action before I go home, but even if I don't, I'm wrapped that I even caught a Murray cod out here tonight. Absolutely stoked. Gee, it's peaceful this time of the evening. Gentle breeze in my face. I love the sights and sounds down here. It's absolutely stunning. And I'll tell you what, I can enjoy it even more now that that shocking heat wave has passed us. It lasted about two weeks. And let me, let me give you an example. The top temperature today where I live was 31 degrees. During the heat wave, we had a night where that's as low as the temperature got, 31 degrees overnight. So yeah, I'm just glad it's done with for now. There's only one 40 degree day coming up on our forecast that I can see. Much more comfortable weather. And it's still hot enough to get out and enjoy the outdoors and have a swim and have a fish and all those things without being ridiculously hot. Oh, look at that big hawk above me. He is beautiful. Cockies didn't like him being around. They cracked them big time. Wonder if the cockies have got a nest. Another one. He's not as big as the first one. Seems the cockies don't like him being around though. <laughs> I am going to stick with cheese for the last 20 minutes that I'm here before it gets dark. So I might just come and pull this shrimp net in and see how many I ended up getting in the couple of hours that I was here and release them back into the water. Whoa, there is a ton of shrimp in there guys. Have a look at that. Absolutely heaps. Let's count them and throw them back. And then I'm going to go home and probably put this shrimp net in the bin because that zipper is buggered. Alright. Oh wow. Did you have a look in there? Lots. Alright, so. One. Oop. That one escaped, but he got back. Fourteen. I think that was 14 and I didn't miss count. That's not bad for a couple of hours, 14 shrimp in the net. That's more bait than I would need if I was keeping fishing using them as bait. So, well, I've put them back to catch again another day. And look at that, the zip works now that it's wet, isn't that funny? <laughs> All right guys, so I'm just chucking a few things in the car before it gets dark. My rods are still in the water. I am still fishing for another 15 to 20 minutes, but if you're seeing this footage, it probably means I didn't get any more fish. I did get the one little Murray cod, he was 25 to 30 centimetres. I'm stoked with that, I came fishing and I caught a fish. And it doesn't matter what size they are when you're releasing them back into the water anyway. So, I had a blast, I hope you enjoyed the video, I'll catch you all in the next one. <laughs>